with 13% reporting the finale to determine whether we head down the path of socialism or barbarism. We've got, with 13% reporting, 51.8 Bolsonaro, 48.2 Lula. Uh, with 13% reporting, though, these numbers are not reliable. So we're, you know, it really depends district by district what comes in. I would not interpret this as a loss yet. Uh, unfortunately, we've got some, some bad news here. I've been seeing tweets. I don't want to sound alarmist, but there's a serious attempt at a coup happening in the open right now in Brazil. The federal traffic police, along with state police and elements of the army, are trying to suppress the vote across the country. I will continue to post updates. Here is the supposed order from the Bolsonaro supporting director general of the federal traffic police to ignore the electoral court and carry out operations against public transport. This is the time to sound the alarm bells. So I guess an, an order is being made to like shut down transportation uh, against the orders of the electoral court in order to prevent people from getting to the voting booths. Wow, that's crazy. So true. The Lula campaign has asked the electoral court to take action against the director of the federal traffic police. If it doesn't, I fear the worst. Here is the footage showing the military working with the police to illegally suppress votes outside the city of um, Niteroi, uh, just on the other side of the bay from Rio. When are we expected to have results by? We'll get them today. Here's footage of them shutting down highways. We just looked at that, you goofy goober. The head of the electoral court is about to speak, but this is the guy responsible for the attempted coup, the director general with the federal traffic police. The operation was planned in the presidential palace on October 19th. The latest reporting indicates more than 560 took place with as many as... Guys, remember what they say. If voting changed anything, they would try to make it illegal. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, are they trying to make it illegal? Please keep that in mind. If, if you know, if, uh, if, if, if it changed anything, they would try. They do try. Every time. Every time. There's an attempt at, like, a fascist coup. They first, like, subvert the vote. They, the first thing they go after is electoral stability. Every time, you know? Um, they're doing it here in America, successfully. Very successfully. We'll talk about that soon. By far the most important scandal in Brazil right now, the right-wing candidate for Sao Paulo governor faked an assassination attempt to make him look like a hero, killed a random unarmed man in the process, then covered it up by forcing a journalist to lead all footage. This sounds like a lot. Leaked audio. I... I can only speak English. Basically, no international coverage. I, I don't have any way of verifying this. It's a long story. Yeah, I don't have any way of verifying this. Without international coverage, I don't have an English source to look at. Learn Portuguese. I'll work on it, okay? I'm going to quick, I'm going to speed learn Portuguese in my second monitor while we're doing this. It seems the electoral court is bending over for the police and won't do anything besides order an end to operation. The head of Brazil's electoral court says he believes police operations may have delayed people from voting but didn't stop them from voting, says police chief told him he was trying to enforce the highway code by stopping buses with dodgy tires. Oh, yeah, dude, right. Just just, just me and my soldiers with rifles and a military um, uh, transportation uh, vehicle on the highway to check people for for flat tires absolutely oh yeah dude just just ke just keeping the highway safe just making sure you're not speeding bud <sighs> this is one of the reasons by the way why it's very convenient for people in power to have votes distributed um unequally between different demographics like racially or uh, economically because when it comes to suppressing votes it's very difficult to suppress votes individually based on your voting predilections, but it's relatively easy to discriminate against, like, populations, you know? You can't keep every Democrat from entering a, um, a voting booth, but you can shut down voting booths in majority Democrat areas. It makes it a lot easier. Dems lose the Senate maybe 10 years till Dems control the presidency. Buddy, Excel, if the Dems lose the, v the, the engine to government, we're not getting anything in 10 years. Curse image. Yeah, First Lady Michelle Bolsonaro votes today in Brazil. I love uh, fascist tro trophy wives. You can almost tell how likely a candidate is to be a fascist based on how old the wife is. If the wife is their age, it's far more likely that they're a good person than, uh, than, than like if they're like 30 years younger or something, you know? That's such a common trope. Not 100%, but it's, you know, it's a common trope. I don't know. I don't understand the barcode Israel shirt. I don't. I don't get that. She's forty. Yeah, and Bolsonaro is like, what sixty? Uh, sixty-seven. Wow. I mean, I guess. I guess he doesn't look bad. Or sit. Nah. I mean, he just looks like an old guy. I don't know. I've seen people who look worse at sixty-seven. You know who looks better than Bolsonaro? 
You guys know who I'm referring to, don't you? Despite being 10 years older, you know who I'm referring to? That's right. Goddamn Lula. Hell yeah, it looks like a fucking Jedi. The secret is growing a beard, but fascists can't grow beards. They're incapable. He looks good, though. 77. I mean, he's old. How old is Lula's wife? Marisa Leticia Lula de Silva. Uh, is um, uh, 66, so 11 years younger. Uh-oh. Now that still counts. Oh, his first wife passed away. His current wife is younger. Okay, current wife is 11 years. Uh, why can't fascists grow beards? Because the, like, the aesthetic of, like, the clean-shaven, like, new man is the, uh, is, like, sort of a key component of the fascist, um, mythos, you know? Like, fascism is social conservatism at its utmost, and social conservatism in the West is heavily associated with clean-shavenness. It's just a, it's just a trope. Most popular Brazilian football player supports, supports Bolsonaro? Yeah, well, it's... Within hours of the ballot in Brazil, Neymar uploaded a video to his social network expressing his support for Jair Bolsonaro. I mean, this guy's like an incredibly powerful celebrity, so it's not as though it's surprising that he would side with the, um... Soccer culture is full of machismo? Yeah, they're sports players. You know, outside the, like, memes about us all being, like, neats who play video games versus, like, the sports gigachads chads or whatever, you guys do, like, the average sports player, like, is a piece of shit. They're huge beat, dude. Like the NFL, NBA are full of like wife beating, like cheat, like horrible shit all the time because th these are like hyper masculine social cultures where not like nobody cares about anything, and your coach will cover up like fairly major crimes as long as you continue making an obscene amount of money for a wide variety of institutions that rely on your performance, you know. And not to mention the brain damage, uh, yeah, that yeah. NBA is better than the NFL, though? Yes, the NBA is better than the NFL. The NFL is like brain damage university. It's, it's the, you know, playing football in, in college is the, uh, the most reliable, uh, you know, way of, of, of sort of, infl it's, it's like reverse college, you know, because your, your brain hurts more. Hey, Vosh, poor areas here are majority black, not majority indigenous. Isn't there a lot of social overlap in some places of Brazil between black and indigenous populations because they were both subjugated by the Spanish when the Spanish came over? Not to say they're the same, just like in terms of like like so like social alienation or like not necessarily. Oh, the Portuguese, not the Spanish, sorry. People in chat think Americans give a fuck about the difference between the Portuguese and the Spanish. They think we give a single shit. They think we give a fuck about Spain, too, hanging off of Spain. Like, oh, uh, it's not the Spanish. It's the yeah, like, we don't give a shit. Yeah, they're both from the Iberian Peninsula, okay? Sorry, when the Iberian P Peninsulan colonists came over. There we go. So I'm going to assume that my actual statement was fully correct. Uh, and, and that you're, you're all mad uh, that I don't give a shit about the oh, sorry. That's an older speech. I thought you meant he was arrested now. Neymar is accused of a lot of tax evasion. Lula mentioned he's probably made a deal with Bolsonaro to get his support. That would track. Dirty politics. Wonder what Greenwald is thinking of Brazil? Hmm. Hmm. Glenn Greenwald, the guy who was known for supporting Lula, who used to take great pride. I think he has to play this one neutral because in because his audience is 100% conservative, you know? Uh, so he can't, like, oppose Bolsonaro, but at the same time, you know, he probably thinks it's more expedient to be, to play neutral here rather than to openly denounce Lula. He does support Bolsonaro, though. His audience in Brazil is 100% leftist? Well, then they're about to get a f***ing cold ice water bucket to the face, because Glenn Greenwald has been a pretty open fascist for years. Lula's catching up faster than he did in the first round? Don't clench your cheeks with hopium right now, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Don't do stuff like this. You people are setting yourself up for an early suicide with shit like this, you know? Like, ah, well, if we take a look at the projected catch-up times relative to the other thing, then actually we'll win by 50 million points, you know? No shot. Greenwald doesn't give a damn. Both Lula and Bolsonaro are pro-Russian shills, so it's kind of irrelevant to him who wins. No, 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 no. I fully disagree. Uh, they are not pro-Putin shills. There's a difference in this type. It's the same as with um, Bolivia, okay? There is a difference between leaders 
who are pro Russia and leaders who are anti America. You see this with um with with uh, uh um with um oh my god, the guy from Bolivia. How am I forgetting right now? Oh my god, how the guy, the guy who we recently found out was sussy. Evo Morales, thank you. Evo Morales will defend Putin, but he will do so because he's part of like an anti American hegemon. Whereas uh, people like Bolsonaro, this is the reason why Trump can get along with Bolsonaro and Putin, but Trump couldn't get along with Lula. You understand? Bolsonaro isn't really anti-American. Bolsonaro is just fascist and pro-fascism and will ally with America if America is fascist and with Russia if Russia is fascist. Lula is not a fascist. Lula understands that there are two global hegemons, ones aligned with Russia slash China, and one's aligned with America, and will side with the non-American side because America has and will be far more likely to interfere with Latin American politics than Russia will, which is completely true and valid. Um, but Trump would never be an ally to Lula, nor really would Putin, I think, uh, outside of the shared not wanting to be under the American hegemon. Trump also couldn't get along with Morales? Yes, yes. Our fertilizer comes from Russia because Bolsonaro closed our factories. Interesting. Yes, I know, Revolt29. All right. What do we got in the uh, the turn-in right now? 13% goes to 24% reporting. Hmm. Curious. Lula is not anti-American. I would say he's suspicious of American hegemon. That's for sure. Oh, boy. It's going to be one of those streams, isn't it? Can I get a reliable counter that isn't the f***ing New York Times, please? The Guardian? Thank you. I f***ing hate the New York Times. Uh, you know, it's kind of crazy how you can see the history play out, right? So, like, the Portuguese would have landed on the east coast of Brazil. So, demographically speaking, you're probably going to see more... Um, more indigenous representation the further west you go. This is the most reliable and frequently updated one. Thank you. Oh, it's even in Portuguese. How authentic. It's the opposite? The blue part volts Bolsonaro? Oh my god, you're totally right. I'm a complete retard. Well, I no longer have any explanatory, uh, uh you know, legitimacy. Outside the US, red means left wing. Yeah, I know, I know, I forget. Rural versus urban, it's the same as ever. Um, yeah, wait, hold on. Brazil population map. I might be projecting a little bit. I know, for example, that um, Evo Morales' support largely came from rural areas. That in, um, that in Bolivia, like, the cities were full of, like, white Christians, and the rural areas were full of indigenous people, and the indigenous people were more likely to vote for Evo Morales. In Brazil, urban is right-wing and rural is left-wing? No, because this is saying the opposite, see? The population map shows there are far more people over here on the coast, but that's where the votes are coming in for, um, for Lula. Whereas the rural areas are the Bolsonaro ones. Sometimes significantly. This over here, Roraima, is like 75% Bolsonaro. In Brazil, the northeast is the blackest part of the country and the south is the whitest? Interesting. Those aren't urban areas. Those are rural. But the population map. I guess there's also a lot of population down here in the south. And that's voting for Bolsonaro. The northeast is the most rural? No, the northwest is. Right here. It's not a rural-urban divide. It's an indigenous-white divide. That's the Amazon? Yeah, the Amazon's pretty f***ing rural. <laughs> Yeah, so what? Yeah, what? What? That in, in America, like the forests and the Everglades are also rural areas. Yeah, rural just means outside cities. Yeah, those are very rural areas. It's, you know, one person per mile or some shit. Wait, okay, hold on. Brazil map race. Brazil's racial situation is so much more complicated than America's is, right? That's what I've heard. The politics there. It's not rural, it's the Amazon. It's, 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 it's the Amazon! It's, wait, wait. All right, why is this not loading? Racial dot map. 
Okay, here we go. This is, uh, this is more useful. Okay, so green is brown slash mixed. Red is black. And that's like, so, so red is like fully concentrated in like cities. Green is all over here and blue is white. And as we can see, the whiteies be voting for Bolsonaro. Because white people globally have the worst political tendencies. Whiteies do be voting. That's like saying Yellowstone is rural. I would count Yellowstone as rural. If I was looking at a big map and I was like, hey, this area has low population density because it's rural and it's like, that's a national park. Well, I would count that. I mean, I'm, the, for, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this from space right now. Like we're being inexact, you know? Can we not argue about this? Life is stressful enough right now. The German speaking parts of Brazil is pro Bolsonaro for some. Really? The German speaking people in Latin America are, uh, are, are, are voting for the fascist candidate. Is that so? Did anyone see that viral Twitter post where it was the person who was like, look, I found like a German village in Brazil and people were like, nobody tell her. I know there were Germans in Brazil before the whole Nazi thing, but it's still funny. Pomerode or Pomeroda? A Brazilian municipality here. I wish I could make German noises with my mouth, like that, like like an accordion or like a horn or something. It's like a it's it's like a German village, but it's in Brazil, which is kind of dope, really, because German villages actually have like high tier aesthetic, you know. So just that's cool. But Josef Mengele was in Brazil when he died. Hmm. Can you give the final predictions for the U.S. midterms? No, I don't like making predictions. You wouldn't like me making predictions right now either. They also do this in Brazil? Confederados? Confedi Confederate expatriates who fled the U.S. South during Reconstruction. I think it's really interesting how when you look at stuff like that, one interesting pattern is like, um, so many times you'd think it's like, why would these Confederate guys want to flee South where there are more non-white people, right? And the answer to that is that they actually want to live around non-white people as long as they own them. That's the actual answer, right? Like the Confederates didn't want to didn't want to live in a pure white society. They wanted to live around non-white people as long as they could own them. They did, you know, it was it was critical to their their identity that um that they could continue. There was still slavery in Brazil. Yeah, that's why I'm saying own them. Um it was critical to their identity to uh you know to to dominate in that respect it's insecure yeah they needed that that underclass yeah for sure chester pancake they still have festivals yeehaw this is a cursed cultural association right here you just know that somewhere in guatemala there are a bunch of like ex-confederate people you know what i mean who are um who are who are dotsy doing to this day Much appreciated, Kujum, but no promises. Lula go up. Uh, where was the... There it, there it is. Looking pretty good. Two percentage between them. Two percentage separating them. Have you heard of the Japanese Brazilians? Well, I figure there would be Japanese people in Brazil, right? There are people everywhere, everywhere, right? I mean, it's pretty cool. Presidente means president, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much for the translation. A poster used in Japan to attract immigrants to Brazil and Peru. It reads, let's go to South America with your entire family. Yeah? Why are you shirtless? Why do you look like this? It's kind of creepy. Sir? Sir? Put a shirt on. Why are you oiled up, sir? Also, is this racist? If anybody in the West painted a Japanese man with this skin tone, they would be called racist. But this was made by Japanese people. I don't get that at all. I don't get that. Like, I don't understand. Black people, like black people, have dark skin. 
that is closer to black than white people. White people, I guess, are more peach colored, but like I get where white, like I get where you're saying white, right? Japanese people don't have yellow skin at all. Not even remotely. I've been to Japan. They they have the same skin tone as white people, just a little bit paler, most of them. There's no no yellow tone there. Maybe some parts of Southeast Asia? I don't know. Paler? Yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to be weird about it or anything. I've just I've been, I've been to Tokyo. It's just, you know, literally like here's some people in that famous uh shopping district. They have exa the exact same skin tone as people that you'd see in like LA or whatever, like white people. Literally. It's the exact same skin tone. It's the exact same. <laughs> They just really like The Simpsons. Ah, uh, yeah, true. That's pretty true. Yeah, we saw Jin Shiresh. I guess it was just an easy way to otherize Asian people. I wonder where that came about from, because if you look at, like, old Japanese scrolls, if you look at older self-depictions, weren't they all, like, white? L like, like, we are? If I remember correctly, like, they would, yeah, they were all, like, white, like, porcelain white. And then at some point, yellow became the thing. But if you look at art from this period, see? Like, they were all, I guess except for this lecherous old dude, who's, like, my exact skin tone, basically. This famous one. Printing posters had limited color options. Yeah, but they're using yellow right here for the, the bands on this guy's kimono. They could clearly, if they wanted to depict their skin as yellow, they could, but they go, they went with white. Yo! Yeah, yeah. He's mad he can't see his forehead. I fucking love this painting, dude. It's so good. Well, whatever. We're, we're on one hell of a tangent right now. What's even the context? I don't fucking know. Oh, how did East Asians become yellow? You firmly. In their earliest encounters with East Asia, Europeans almost universally characterized the people of China and Japan as white, yet by the end of the 17th century, the category of whiteness was reserved for Europeans only. When and how did Asians become yellow in the Western imagination? Looking at the history of racial thinking, explore the notions. The conceptual relation between East Asians and yellow skin did not begin in Chinese culture or Western readings of East Asian culture, but in anthropological and medical records that decided that described variations in skin color. 18th century taxonomers such as Carl Linnaeus, as well as Victorian scientists and early anthropologists, assigned colors to all racial groups. That's why it was literally some autist from in Western Europe who was just like, uh, well, the gods created the heavens and the earth in an orderly logic, so therefore there must be one star sign and one color to every... It was like how the, uh, the original colors of the rainbow were split up to, uh, to, uh, include, like, musical notation or whatever. What was that? When Isaac Newton first split the colors of light with a, with a prism, he, he gave them eight colors because of, he wanted it to match the musical notation, but it didn't even do that or something. God damn it. Yeah, look. Sir Isaac Newton believed the seven colors of the rainbow represented the seven musical notes on a scale. Newton's idea... Because all Europe, at, during the Enlightenment, Europeans were obsessed with the idea that, like, God was math, and they were God was communicating to all of them in, like, perfect mathematical harmony, like, at all times. Like, they, they, were, of the, they were of the opinion that because the universe was created by a god, that it must have done so in some, like logic they could comprehend like some very simple orderly but because they wanted that so badly um they 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 just like saw patterns everywhere they did the same thing with the planets too newton's idea that color corresponded to musical notes was an idea not far removed from the ancients it's like the same logic brain that was like oh yeah there are four elements water earth fire and air you know the greeks had seven musical modes eonian Dior, uh, dorian um phrygian lydian Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. They assigned a planet to each of the musical nodes. They also assigned a single note in the musical scale to each planet. It, this is this is like nonsensical. 
this is, yeah, it's spirit science shit. This doesn't mean anything. It's like, ah, well, we 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 have uh, seven colors of the rainbow, so that must be one for each of the chakra in our bodies, you know? Um, the specific planet assigned to each mode or note varies. Yeah, of course, because it doesn't f***ing matter. According to whose research you are studying. However, regardless of who, no, Vosh, it's pattern recognition, come on. But it's it's nonsensical pattern recognition. It's like, well, here's six things, so it must be like this other thing that is six things. You know, it doesn't, it's, it, it's, it's not real pattern recognition. It's just like trying to assign order to the universe in the most, like, childlike way possible. Um... Each planet and level of the heavens was thought to have a musical note, a musical mode, and a color associated. Each level of the heavens had a vibration it operated in. The seven colors of the rainbow stacked one right on top of the other, being symbolic of seven ascending levels of vibration in the heavens stacked on top of one another. As you ascend up, you ascend through ever finer levels of vibration. One researcher describes the musical scale in the colors of the rainbow as follows. Do, red, re, orange, mi, yellow, fa, green, sol, blue, la, indigo, ti, violet, which would bring us to do, which in the world of color would be a new octave of red at a higher level and vibration in the spectrum of light. In the world of music, this would be a higher octave, a faster vibration of the same note you started out with. Some of these ideas are similar to the ideas of Pythagoras when he is uh, presented in his ideas in te tetrises, tet tetractes, tetractes. The tetrates is symbolized by ten dots arranged in a pyramid form. The bottom row is four dots. The next three, uh, the next row is three, then two, then one at the capstone of the pyramid. The three dots represent the threefold manifestation of the. Ah! <laughs> hey, remember how seven hundred years before this, during the golden age of Islam, they had Medicare for all. That was cool. Pythagoras had an irrational fear of beans. No joke. Nice. Let's go read tarot cards, yeah. How does this relate to the humors? Yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, shit. They're only 1.5 away now. We're going to keep taking a look at this, all right? We're going to keep an eye. Oh, it just ticked again. 1.4, right in front of me. It just ticked again. 1.4 separating. The Pythagorean cult killed a guy for proving irrational numbers exist? That is so f***ing funny, dude. Holy shit. Absolutely. The Chad Pythagorean cult, knowing that ra numbers must be rational, and the, uh, the virgin, um, you know, esoteric mathematicians who pretend the existence of irrational numbers. What is the best counter-argument to one who proposes the existence of an irrational number, my friends? You simply kill them. <laughs> Obviously. That's true, Bluestone. Look at this poster from Brazil. Wait, is this is this just Huh? Is this The sunglasses? Did they image edit Lula here? Did they give him pointy ears and a hook nose? Did they not? Maybe it's just the way the image is stretched. I think it's the angle, yeah. No, his ears are pointy. Well, I know his ears are generally pointy, yeah. No, no, I think I think it's just the angle. It's just the angle. Just making sure, you know. It's not as though anti-Semitism isn't, like, a recurring problem in the far right in all countries, basically. 0.06%. Pulling ahead even further. Tempting as it is, I don't know if I want to spend the remainder of stream smashing refresh on this uh, number as it continues to go up. I think we'll uh, revisit this shortly. Do you think Bolsonaro will pull a stop the steal? Yes. Bloomberg News says that votes are lagging in areas where Bolsonaro should be doing well. So you're saying there might be more of a Bolsonaro surge moving forward? I just heard my whole neighborhood scream and joy it was beautiful. Ah, our Brazilian VGGers. Hello. Sure. People are going insane in my neighborhood. Up to 81% of the votes counted, it seems. The MTV Music Awards just called it for Lula. Oh, it's 100% going to Lula. There's no chance at all that that's not the case. Now ahead by 1.2 percentage points with 
reporting. I really do wish he could win by a higher margin, though. Keep in mind, it looks like Lula is going to win by about 2 million votes, but um, Biden won by 7 million. Of course, in uh, Brazil, the vote is determined by the actual popular vote, whereas in America, it's the Electoral College. So America is like three times the population. That's not relevant. Self-reinforcing outrage is a symptom of fascism, Princess Sammy. The, sim the, the, elements, the elements of sort of fascist self-perpetuation have to be, uh, you know, they, they have to be immune to being um, defeated by the, the facts at hand. You know, it, it, it has to be something which can be uncritically and permanently referred to. There are about 5 million invalid votes, so Lula might have gotten more than is being reported. Yeah, you have to understand that any time a fascist loses an election, that is them losing an election in spite of, uh, you know, all of the voter suppression that they have engaged in. The, um, like, all of the, uh, the, the gerrymandering, all of the, like, voter intimidation, all of the, uh, you know, at this point, like, the military blockades on the roads to keep people in pro- uh, uh, pro Lula regions from voting um, every time. Like how Biden won by 7 million votes after all that business with the local Republican representatives taking away uh, election stations and blah, 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 blah. Look at these states. Lula won the Amazon. Nice. Oh, okay. In the Amazonas. You could buy the subscription to New York Times. You don't understand. I hate the New York Times. I despise them. Why? 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 What do you mean, why? Because they're supposed to be, they, they used to be like a, like a titan of reporting, and now everything is fucking paywalled, so all their disseminated information has to be like, you know, you have to pay for it. Uh, and they constantly bring on like right wing op ed editors and writers to um to to introduce their fucking both sides are bad actually take on any given possible fucking issue. They're literally anti union. They're anti everything. They're terrible. The articles are good though. They're high quality. The quality in terms of like the 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 money that goes into it. The expected uh you know elocution sure. But in terms of the 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 fucking value of the content they produce, this tweet sort of touches on how the U.S. State Department is going to try to help ensure a peaceful transition in the case Lula wins. Huh? Fulha reports White House plans on sending National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan to Brazil in coming days if Lula wins, partly to reinforce U.S. support for a peaceful slash smooth transition. Article which cites unnamed source does not mention plans of Bolsonaro wins. Interesting. Well, the question is if this is actual help or if it's not. This could be taken in many different ways. What you think, Bush? I think that this is a good thing. Uh, overwhelmingly. Um, I, I think that the Biden administration has some awareness of the threat global fascism poses to democracy abroad. And I think they understand they need an ally here and they can't risk, like, Lula falling to a coup. Um, if they were going to do any, like, first of all, there's no reason for them to do any Latin American coup shit. Uh, Biden does not have, like, a good relationship with Bolsonaro. Um, additionally, like, if we were going to facilitate a coup, why would we send our Nat security advisor? That's not the person we would send. We would not say anything about it, and then we would have, like, uh, like, like quiet ops being done. Or there would be, like, American-aligned mercenaries that turn up somewhere in the fucking rural areas that end up helping like Bolsonaro officials maintain control. I don't think that I don't think we would do this as part of like a secret like bad guy agenda or whatever. I mean, maybe. For context, Jake Sullivan helped negotiate the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah, Jake Jake Sullivan isn't the worst guy in the world. Not the best, but you know he's not the worst guy in the world. Hold on. God damn it. Sorry, getting ready for the next segment. Yes, now a full 1.3% ahead. Nice. Wonder if he'll be able to get 2%. Probably not with the available... Eh, it's, not, it's not literally impossible. Close, though. 
Yeah, somewhere between 1.5 and 1.6% uh, percent lead, seems likely. Does Brazil do popular vote? Yes. Do you think Bolsonaro will try a full coup? Um, he's going to try something, that's for sure. Well, no, uh, no way to get back around there. That's uh, actually pretty close to two points ahead. That's um, 1.64, uh, I think. Yeah, 1.64. I wish America had this kind of voter participation. We should stay Absatoth, just don't engage as much. Lula just passed the threshold and is now considered elected. Dope. Voting here is mandatory. I wish voting here was mandatory. I don't even care. Is it problematic? Sure, I don't care. Thank you. I don't care. Um, well, I, I guess we're going to see tomorrow what crazy shit Bolsonaro's cooking up, aren't we? So sad. Uh, Alexa, can you play um, Despacito? Yeah. Probably harder. Christianity is such a black stain in the West. It's insane. Everything good the West has ever done has been in spite of Christianity. Christianity has fought against every f***ing moat of progress we've ever gotten. The only reason like the West is on the map right now is because of the downstream philosophical and social developments from the Enlightenment. And the church hated those. The church hated those. The they fought against all that shit. The church has consistently been on the wrong side of every single f***ing thing that we've ever done that has been good. Um, fringe take? It's true. You can, you can, uh, Reddit atheist take to acknowledge reality. Um, personally, I think it's very cringe how you, uh, don't ignore obvious facts. Like, wh what do you want from me? Like, it's true. The Reddit atheists were right. They were just annoying. They were right and annoying. True. But most of those Enlightenment thinkers were Christians themselves. And? Yeah, like, everyone was back then. Like, you would be killed if you weren't Christian for a large portion of the history of the West. I didn't say Christians have been a black stain on the West, because that would be most of the West. I'm saying Christianity. I don't think Christianity inspired all of those um, developments, because oftentimes the church was opposed to them. It wasn't just that they were Christians, the Enlightenment was thoroughly Christian. Everything was thoroughly Christian. It was compulsory. They would kill you. They thought atheists were in league with the devil. They, 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 everything there was tied into Christianity. But the church was opposed to so many of these broader institutional developments. This is like this is like me saying that like the um like America has done so many bad things, and you guys are like, um, Martin Luther King Jr. was American? Well, he was also Christian, yeah. No, they thought Jews were in league with the devil. They thought both were in league with the devil, okay? Hell yeah! Boost it! Like and retweet. Boost it, boost it, boost it! Vosh, you do know Christianity can inspire just as much good as evil? No, shut the f up. Stop. Stop, chat. I don't care. No. No, Reli the church has not equally inspired good and evil. The church as an institution has been, like, broadly opposed to almost every positive development that we've gone through in the West. Every big jump forward socially, every minority whose rights was fought for, every group, every development, the church was against it, okay? I don't care if you're not in line with the church, you're like a good Christian or whatever, all right? It's just, that's how it is. Religion is not like an equal and neutral effect on human development. You're really ignoring the labor movements here? Oh my God. Oh my God. The labor movements didn't need Christianity. How stupid do you have to be? to legitimately think that, like, uh, did you know that most people throughout the West were Christian? That means all the good things that they had to fight against the church to get actually wouldn't have happened if they weren't Christian. No, of course they were Christian. Everyone was Christians. Everyone. But the church, the institution of Christianity, the, were the power and the money for all time. You know where the church is today, guys? It's fundamentalist Christians. The church in America today, the capital C church, the power that religion has in this country is the doomsday cult. They're the fundies. They're the people who want you dead. They want you in death camps. And the multi-hundred millionaire preachers
that promote these ideologies, the prosperity gospel, that is the face of the church in the United States. Just because you went to some cozy church, you know, and you, you're religious and your family's cool. No, the institution of religion. Listen, your family isn't cool because they're Christian. Your family's just cool, dog. Don't attribute that to Christianity. Why would you take that away from your family? Why would you take that away from the labor movement or the enlightenment? Christian nationalism is the weighted uh, uh, the ecclesiastic movement in the United States right now. Ah, uh, but my family isn't cool? Okay, well, that's because of the Christianity then. Sorry, I'm not getting into this argument again with chat. Vosh, the idea of property rights is not secular. John Locke's idea of property rights derives from the idea of God. Oh my God, you don't listen. You're incapable of listening. Oh my God. Just because religious people formulated their progressive ideas through their belief of God does not mean that the church was a positive institution in the 18th century. And you can, and also you, the idea of property rights isn't secular. You think you like all of it, you think like the entire concept of property rights is like a religious one. Like today, like when people, are, when, when I would justify like conceptually the idea of owning your own toothbrush, I would have to do so by referring to God. Yes. Religious people will put religion in the shit they make. But the idea of property rights, to the extent that it's been a good one, which obviously I would not say so, uh, is not, like, dependent upon... Okay, no, stop. Stop. Oh, my God. Chat's trying to trigger you. I just don't think... I don't think they understand. They're not capable. New York Times calling it for Lula? Hell yeah. I think some people just want to hear some churches can be good. Nah, f*** you. Insecure motherfuckers. You think you're going to get that from me? If you got your local church and you like it, then go to that fucking church. Don't fucking bother me because you're angry that I'm not going to, like, pretend that I think religion's a good institution. Sorry, you believe in God. Why are you turning to me for comfort? Jesus Christ. Um, my local church, fine. Good, then go to it. I'm not stopping you. I believe in freedom of religion. Go. I'm surprised how upset the chat got, considering how gay it is. Most people are religious. Um... You cannot serve both God and Vosh at the same time. True. You cannot be pious and also a bgg -er at the same time. It's not possible. Bolsonaro is the first candidate to ever lose re-election in Brazil. Well, to be fair, Brazilian democracy hasn't been around for that long, but yeah. You gotta like and retweet. The, Lu the Lula boost. Jesus Christ, Vosh, stop with the anti-religious brain rot. Vor. Oh, I don't want to read the article. I'm a leftist. There we go. Jesus, I nearly learned something. Yeah. Stop, chat. I'm going to ban people in chat who are still arguing. Oh my God, stop. I'm engaging anyway. Vosh, you put Christianity as opposed to the Enlightenment. The church is bad, we agree. But to say Christianity is bad because the thing that makes Europe special is not Christianity. No, Christianity is bad because it's retarded. I'm sorry. F you. There's no fucking epistemic justification for your metaphysical positions. Okay, stop. No, F you. But the Enlightenment was thoroughly Christian. Everything was Christian back then because everyone was Christian. The power centers of the church were broadly against the progressive elements of the Enlightenment, which were what developed into democracy and liberalism and all the shit that we like the Enlightenment for. Selectively liberalism. The idea of rights as we have them today is because of the development and expansion upon a religious and Christian idea. Do you know how history works? That would be like that would be like saying that literally like everything that we love today is actually because of the belief in the god emperor Za, because the fucking Babylonians upon whom the you know the political structures were then developed upon by the Greeks and then the Romans and therefore the West broadly uh you know relied upon like that's not how it works. Obviously, the ideas that people come up with in a given time are going to be heavily influenced by the preconceptions of religious biases they have, but that doesn't mean that those religious biases were good. It just means they were influenced by it. It means they happened concurrently. Um, you know? Like, that's not... The, 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 the justification here isn't the idea. I haven't made the statement that everything that was ever influenced by religion must necessarily be bad, though I will make the argument that, generally speaking, the influence of religion has been bad in those good things, right? Like, I don't like American nationalism, but there have been people who have used pro-American patriotic rhetoric in line with ideas that I believe in, like Martin Luther King Jr. talking about fulfilling the promises of the Founding Fathers, 
uh, you know, or about like Abraham Lincoln, you know. Tomada de apoiadores eleitores do candidato Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, agora presidente Kiki eleito Maybe. Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. É só o começo, né, Tralha? É possível que a Avenida Paulista seja, fique abarrotada de gente. E o Lula ganha essa eleição, gente, fazendo um movimento inédito também para o PT, que foi fazer essa ampliação de aliados. Ele não só é, vence a eleição, como ele vence a eleição com um antigo adversário histórico com volta pela terceira. Boa noite a todos, nós estamos exatamente para lá, ele evidenciar nós estamos não. Então se imagina que ele estará dentro dos próximos It's kind of crazy how different Portuguese sounds from Spanish. They look to me they look more like way more similar than they sound. They sound like not even remotely the same. They look like, you know, a little bit similar. A lot of pronunciation stuff, I guess.